Hello, welcome back. Um, so now with us, we have a visitor from CSC, um, UC Ankovara. I hope I got that correct. Yeah, um, pretty, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but UC works at CSC, the IT Center for Science. So CSC is the national high performance computing center in Finland, but not just that. It's actually a whole lot more than just the services you see here. And even what you see here isn't just high performance computing. But anyway, CSC is paid by the Ministry of Culture and Education, I believe, to provide services for free to academic researchers and others within Finland. So CSC, like all, all the things we've been talking about today, CSC has similar but larger, a bigger scale. Um, it might be a little bit more work to use because you have to apply for the resources and migrate to there. But if you need power or cross-university collaboration, this is the place to go. And was that a good intro? Should you? That was uh, that was an excellent intro. Okay, yeah. So I will stay here. I'll be looking for at questions in the notes and raise them at an appropriate time. So go ahead. Okay, thanks, uh, Perichak, for introduction. So uh, I will tell. I mean, uh, you already heard in in brief uh, what CSC is. I, I might tell uh, a little bit more. And then I give a bit more details at what kind of uh, computing services CSC provides and for what kind of use cases you might want to use our computing services. Uh, science uh, for a long time, uh, even I mean, if you're using computers, hasn't been only about computing. So data is also a big aspect, aspect and we have also some services more more related to data i'll discuss them briefly and finally some something else like like training we provide and of course if you want or need to use csc services uh, uh, what you actually need to do for that uh as said uh, we are owned by uh, ministry of education uh, which owns about 80 percent of the shares and the rest 20 percent is actually owned by the Finnish universities. Uh, we are a non-profit company and we provide uh, quite a lot of different services for the science and higher education. I didn't actually check now what's the latest number of staff we have, but I think it's starting to be close to 700 or something like that. And out from the 700, maybe 120 or 130, work actually with the scientific computing and supercomputing. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though we are sort of discussing here that uh, CSC computing services and what you need to do in, in order to get them used, I actually can assure you that all of you already at this point, you are CSC users. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have ever uh, used any uh, network within the university, the backbone that's provided by Funet, uh, pretty much always when you log into your any university web services, so, so you're using Hack authentication. If you're using Wi Fi, uh, you're most likely using Eduro. So these are sort of these other services. And I think many of the uh, standard administration systems, I think probably if you look for your course results and things like that, there is very probably some CSE mode also there. And coming back to the computing services and things I'm talking here, as I already said, what's uh, probably of big interest for many of you is that you don't actually need to pay most of this any money. So that's uh, already paid by the Ministry of Education. Okay. In what kind of situation you might need CSC services. Uh, I think uh, you can also first question is that when you actually need to use a HPC cluster. And even though 
Uh, that's probably something you, you discussed already earlier today, but just to remind you, supercomputer is not any uh, machine which automatically makes everything faster. So actually to supercomputer to be useful, you need to have some uh, parallelism in your, in your scientific task. Actually, if I take, I could say pretty much uh, any simulation also that runs only a single core and can fit to the memory of my laptop. I'm pretty sure that I mean, my laptop would actually run faster than any of the CSC supercomputers. So you need to have something that runs parallel. Sometimes it also might of course be that uh, you just need to run something for quite a long time. And because of that, using your own workstation or laptop is not, uh, not useful. Uh, second thing might be that uh, actually the problem you are trying to solve uh, needs uh, lots of memory. And uh, that's something that the supercomputers can probably have much, much more memory. Same goes for storage space. Uh, if you need to deal with the terabytes of data, that's uh, most likely something you, you don't want to deal with your local workstation. Uh, one more reason to use CSC or some uh, uh, HPC cluster is that uh, the application you want to use, it might be a commercial application that uh, principally you should pay something for that, but the uh, CSC has actually bought the license for that, and in terms of the license, academic users can use that free of charge. Or uh, even though it might be an open source application, it might be something which is a tedious install, have a lot of dependencies, and having that as a ready to use um, in a supercomputing system might be might be benefit. Uh, regarding the data, uh, if you need to share data for uh, other researchers, your colleagues, some of the services that CSC provide might turn out to be useful. And especially if you actually want to publish the data, that's mm -hmm. that's something that uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's uh, very difficult for you to do in uh, yeah. according all the fair principles on your own. Yeah, we basically don't have our own uh, long-term repositories and say that's CSC's job. Yeah. And I mean, to get uh, some DOEs for your data. And I mean, something where other people can actually also cite your data mm -hmm. if, you, if you share it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is in brief uh, why you might need CSC. You, you have something parallel, you need lots of memory or storage space, application, uh, or data. Uh, you've already uh, uh, learn quite a bit about the university clusters. So this question is, of course, that uh, how how do our computers actually differ from those? And as far as from a user point of view, actually very little. Main difference really is in scale. Uh, how many CPU cores, uh, how many GPUs you can use, uh, how much storage space you have, etc. As an example, in Mahdi, uh, or actually also in, in Lumi CPU partition, you can, if you need, you could be running something like 25,000 cores your simulation. Or mm -hmm. uh, if you need to use hundreds of GPUs, that's in principle available in, in Lumi. Um, the way uh, you access uh, CSC supercomputers, Pretty much the same as you would access, for example, Triton. I mean, you, you can use SSH uh, from your terminal to get the command line based access. And this is actually, I realized a valid point I did not update. I think the uh, web GUI, it's not the reliable as such, uh, so new service. In some terms, new service, but I mean, that's something we have had already for, for three years. Right. And yeah. I think I think in Triton, how long you have actually had that? A little bit, but it's only become a big thing in the last year. Like we've yeah. only really been starting pushing it for basically the new 
Triton in the last month. So yeah, yeah. But uh, once again, something that's also also available there, and I think especially for, for these web interfaces. I mean, if you if you use it in one system, it's you can more or less same way to use that. Uh, when using from command line, uh, we also have a, have a module system uh, to selecting compilers and so on. And in the patch queue system, I think most of the supercomputing cells, not only CSC, actually use Slurm. So differences in usage are mainly uh, what that the partition names and etc. So yeah, uh, one. Big difference, of course, is that uh, uh, when you want to use CSC uh, computing services, you actually need to apply a project for that, and you need to apply for some billing units, which you could think as a CSC money or something like that. And when you do computation, so actually nowadays also for data, you have a lot of data on the disk that also consume these billing units, and it's one way we we try to ensure that the users actually think what they are doing it's often too easy i mean i i've been there i've done that yeah. do some uh, stupid things with with computer and and waste resources so that tries to uh, assure that the users yeah. use the use the resources wise yeah, that's probably the biggest difference between CSC and us. So for us, you just apply for the account, but you don't apply for or account for individual resources separately, but there's no guaranteed amount available to you. At CSC, you apply for the resources, but there's much more available and you're much more likely to get what you apply for within a quick time. Uh, I'll come in the end of the presentation uh, what is actually uh, what is needed for applying this. Mm -hmm. And by the way, of, uh, in the way that you, you need to apply for resources, comes also that you typically also need to report something. Especially, I mean, when you pre apply some resources, you, you need to somehow re report that, mm -hmm. uh, what you use them for, what kind of publication you made, and so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then a bit about uh, what are the computing or what kind of computing uh, resources or services uh, we have uh, at the moment. We have uh, two national supercomputers which are available for uh, basically to the users coming from Finnish universities and higher education institutions. So we have Puhti and we have Mahti. They both are actually in a sort of uh, end part of the, the life so we are currently uh, or we have started already the sort of the process for buying the next national supercomputer uh, probably by the end of next year uh, 2025 and Mahti will retire and we will have a new system what that's going to be I do not know and something something we'll see with the negotiation with the vendors mm -hmm. Uh, Puhti and Mahti, they have a, a little bit different user profiles. So Puhti is, uh, you can somehow think that it's a, it's a bit more uh, general purpose for uh, smaller parallel jobs, having Intel CPUs uh, and some uh, NVIDIA bit uh, older generation GPUs. Mahti is more work uh, geared towards uh, medium and large scale uh, parallel simulations, uh, for example, for most of the partitions, the uh, minimum number of uh, CPU cores you are using that's that single node, which it's in that system with the NV CPUs, it's always uh, 128. Mahti has also a little bit smaller GPU partition than Pufti uh, with the bit newer GPUs. And what the might be useful for some of you for interactive workloads development and so on is that some of these GPUs can also actually be uh, sliced the smaller ones so you do not as as the resources is a bit more limited there are I think only 24 of these nodes but for purposes where you do not need the full computational power of, of single GPU you can get only a subset of that and do some 
this cool stuff to be done. Uh, then, as a sort of uh, black sheep, uh, there is also also Lumi. Lumi is actually not uh, really a CSC supercomputer. So it's actually uh, truly really a pan-European supercomputer uh, funding coming from uh, European Union and 11 uh, con countries belonging to Lumi Consortium. But it's, uh, it's all hosted in CSC. Uh, data center uh, user support is not directly given by CSC, so it's uh, distributed to the these Lumi consortium countries. But uh, if you want to use that, the for Finnish users, you can access it uh, via CSC in applied resources, uh, similar way as to Uhti and Mahti. Uh, Lumi uh, at the moment is the most powerful supercomputer in Europe and the fifth most powerful in the world, uh, having over 10,000 uh, AMD GPUs. So it's really massive compute resource. There is also CPU part of that, uh, uh, which still is uh, quite significant. It's uh, around uh, 200,000 GPU cores also there. Uh, now with all these uh, multitude of uh, different supercomputers, uh, CSC has, you might ask it, okay, which one of these uh, I should actually use? And as I said, it really depends a bit on the, what kind of static does they have a bit different profile. So let's say, both these may be more for small or uh, medium uh, scale parallel task. Uh, it has uh, the most uh, uh, extensive software selection available, while Mahdi has said is more for the uh, uh, larger parallel uh, parallel calculation. The uh, uh, duration of your of your simulation in Mahdi, the maximum time you can run in queue, uh, that's also a bit shorter than in than in Uhti. And Lumi, I would say that the Lumi is really, if you have an application that can really benefit from AMD GPUs, that's that's when you really should consider Lumi. Some projects uh, you might might want to run also the CPUs, but uh, they do not provide that much advantage over over Mahdi. Uh, software availability in Lumi is actually a bit more limited, and talking about the module systems. Uh, 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 Cray module system that is in Lumi, it's in some ways a bit more, in some cases, a bit more complicated to use than, than the ones that we have in Puhti and Mahdi, which are, I would say, more similar to Triton. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, about the web interface, I say this is something that uh, uh, nowadays. You can use all the three supercomputers, either Puhti, Mahdi, or Lumi, here it is. And uh, uh, here you can see the sort of uh, selection of uh, applications within this uh, web interface that you can use for example in Puhti. And uh, I think uh, personally, I use the Jupyter Notebooks a lot. That's that's quite nice. Uh, if you're using a MATLAB for RStudio, that, that also might be, might be quite convenient. And if you need to use some uh, graphical applications using them, we are the web desktop might be also also a good option. Uh, in addition to the, the kind of uh, traditional HPC services, uh, CSC provides also some uh, kind of cloud-like resources. Uh, they might become useful if you have, uh, I mean, the operating system, the system libraries and so on that are available in supercomputers are not always the latest possible. I mean, the main objective for the, for the system is to, that it needs to be stable. And sometimes you might need a bit more flexibility if you really would like to run your own operating system or, or things like that. And for uh, this kind of usage, you might want to consider some of the uh, cloud services. Basically, we have a three type, uh, types of cloud services. We have a uh, CPOT as a general computing cloud. Then 
I don't know are the anti-sodius uh, users doing uh, uh, yeah, genomics or things like that where the data is actually sensitive. Some are. We talked about that a bit on day one, and I think we yeah. mentioned the CSC services. So here. So so yeah. for this kind of thing, there is the uh, ePolta, and then there is also this uh, the Container Cloud that uh, can be useful for some things. Uh, heard that uh, some of you will be somehow interested uh, also about the programming. I won't go in much details how to uh, actually do the parallel program and use. This is just the very brief overview what kind of approaches one, one typically uses in, use in supercomputers and I mean what you can use in uh, if you're using a CSC. So, of course, the basic C, C, Fortran, Python, R, Julia. Uh, for parallel programming, you can use uh, uh, MPI for distributed memory parallelism more open MP for the shared memory. Uh, there are some high performance libraries and GPUs. Uh, if you are doing machine learning, you might be using uh, PyTorch or something like that, which is readily available in the, in the system. Or if you want to do the GPU program yourself, uh, you might be using open MP offloading. OpenACC, CUDA, the heap. Uh, CSC provides also some uh, performance analysis and debugging tools for uh, parallel applications. So maybe you mention this later, but do you have training for all of these different types uh, of yes. things? Yes, I, I mentioned a bit of welcome to training a bit of the end yeah. of the talk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, the technical details I think I will now skip, but I mean the end of slides. So if you're interested, you can you can have some of the actual uh, numbers checked there. You should find pretty much the same information also from the CSC uh, web pages uh, or user documentation. I'll mm -hmm. I'll have the link for that also in the end of the presentation. Okay, uh, let us come then to the, the uh, other aspect I mentioned that. Uh, uh, you might be dealing directly with data or when you're doing the computations and uh, you are you're creating data that you would like to do also a little bit more than just uh, uh, have it in the uh, in the file system the supercomputer uh, one data service we have is the alas object storage and you can upload the data the, uh, from the supercomputer or actually from anywhere. So that's something, the data which is in the, in the supercomputer file system or HPC file system, you can only access within the HPC system, but the data you put in this object storage, you can in principle access from uh, anywhere uh, from internet. And you can also have the data shared to other users. Uh, Lumi has actually its own object storage also, which is uh, 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 it's a physically separate from that. So if you you can use Alas either from Lumi or from Matteo Puhti, uh, Lumi has this uh, Lumi all object storage, which similar you can actually use from from different places. Okay. Uh, CSE provides also some uh, uh, I don't know if uh, fair data findable accessible. Interoperable, reusable is a concept common to you, but basically it means that uh, you can you can publish your data set, and together with the data set, there is also some metadata, and there is also some tools for searching these data sets. So CSC has uh, has some services, for example, uh, EDA is one such a service that, that we provide. Okay, uh, training was uh, uh, already mentioned by Richard. So uh, we have a quite a large amount of training uh, every year in various aspects of supercomputing, just how to use our systems, might be related just to Puhti or Mahti, might be related how to use Lumi, uh, might be some programming course of parallel programming, or might be just how to use certain static application like, like Chromax. Uh, 
There is also possible to get some help if you uh, have a data set that uh, you would like to visualize, uh, something more than just making your XY graphs. Uh, CSL can provide help. And uh, uh, for example, if you're developing your uh, own scientific application and would need some help in getting more performance from that, that's something where CSC can also help. Yeah. So if someone, say, wants to learn MPI program or OpenMB programming or GPU programming, you have these kinds of courses. Uh, yeah. Or I links to them from Lumi or yeah, something. Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, here are just examples of uh, some of the courses we are currently offering. So I think if you just uh, want to learn a bit more about the supercomputers in uh, in sort of general level, we have this online course, Elements of Supercomputing. Uh, should be quite accessible and might be, and has been developed in principle for mostly people who don't necessarily have any previous background of, of HPC. So it's, it's quite general level. Uh, we have also this uh, ongoing online course about how to use CSE computing environment. Uh, we are going to have in the June, July time frame. Uh, we have now for, I think this is not third in time, we are having the summer school about high performance computing. Uh, that's a uh, deadline for that has already passed, but that's sort of uh, 10 days uh, where you, where we really go through uh, all the basic aspects of uh, how to do parallel programming with the MPI, uh, how to use OpenMP, how to do GPU programming. Mm -hmm. So I think that's uh, something if you if you think that uh, you will be doing a parallel program, something you might want to look for in, in next year. I think the for next year, the registration probably opens somewhere in, in January, February. Yeah. Uh, some of the courses we already have in calendar are these uh, high performance are in September. Okay. Yeah, did you have some comment, Richard? No, no. Oh. Please continue. Okay. So all these wonderful services we provide. So how you how you get to use them? First of all, uh, similar to for example Triton, you need to have an account. And for CSC, if you already have a, a, a Haka uh, available, I mean, have, you have been using Haka in your university, you can just go to my.csc.fi and with a few mouse clicks, you will get the CSC user account. Uh, username will probably be different, password, SSH keys, so that you will be using in the DNS cluster, but, but you do not need any really extra steps other than the Haka authentication. Mm -hmm. As discussed, in order to really get some computational resources and uh, use them, there needs to be a project for that. Then you one needs to apply uh, billing units for the project. And for that, not, not quite anybody can apply for the project. But on the other hand, it doesn't to be the big process or so in basically experienced researcher, uh, postdoc or something like that. I mean, if you're doing some research work, there is, there is typically some, some a bit more experienced researcher that can apply for the project and uh, he or she can then apply for billing unit and with the project, the uh, project manager can in principle add any CSC uh, user to the project. Uh, maybe not so relevant for, for this audience, but just uh, just to let you know that uh, when if, if you're teaching a course and you want to use some CSE resources for that, so that there is also possible to apply for uh, for a project for that. For courses, you get the, you typically do not need to apply uh, billing units separately, so there is always fixed amount of resources given there. Uh, the duration is also typically six to six months, so it's a bit shorter term. And participants need to then have the CSC yeah. accounts in, in order to actually use these resources within the course. Yeah. 
And I can say sometimes people come and ask us, oh, what do these questions mean when applying for resources? But when in doubt, just send an email to the CSC service desk or even in, if you're that brave, call and ask for details. <laughs> and I've always gotten good answers that way and, you know, some solution. So yeah, it is some work, but don't be afraid. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, yeah. <laughs> when you when you have these questions solved, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have the service desk. If you go to our main web pages, uh, you can actually find the phone numbers there, uh, yeah. all the user guides and so on. Uh, you can go to yeah. docs.csc.fi, free data yeah. and, and so on, and all the trainings we have we have coming there. You can you can see see yeah. there. And so, us the Alto scientific computing team here we also do um we support csc things if you bring questions to us so um maybe you wouldn't want to for things but for example for using lumi our recommendation is to come to us and let us try to figure out how gpu stuff works there and then you do it yourself uh, we some yeah people come and asking about csc virtual machines or other small debugging things on CSC resources. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much uh, what I had to present. And I mean, uh, if there are any uh, still more questions or something yeah. like that, I'm happy to answer. Let's see. I'll flip to the notes here. Um... So there was a question, where does the abbreviation CSC come from? And from Finnish Wikipedia, I see it does come from Center for Scientific Computing decades ago. Decades um, ago, and at yes, some point, I think the, that was sort of abandoned. There was yeah. time when actually the official name was Center for Scientific Computing, and then at some point, yeah. I don't know, somewhere someone made the decision that, okay, now it's just CSC yeah. IT Center for Science is there, yeah. but the original comes from. Yeah, which is more appropriate these days anyway. Yeah. Uh, there's a question, my code is not using GPUs, so Lumi's only beneficial for GPU work. Um, uh, Lumi, as I said, it has also this uh, CPU partition, mm -hmm. uh, which, I mean, it's a Basic the same kind of CPUs than in Tin Mahti, mm -hmm. uh, one generation newer. Uh, I guess whether you should be using uh, Lumio, Mahti, or Puft in that case is really uh, how. Is it really about, just about, how big and where you're used to and what has enough spare resources some, right now? Some, something like that. And sometimes it, it might be just a matter that. Uh, depending on time of year or whatever, mm -hmm. there is more free resources in one supercomputer than in another. Yeah. Uh, I would say that for Finnish users, uh, having only CPU code, mm -hmm. might is probably be, I mean, for, yeah. for Lumi also, it, you, you can apply to access via this my.csc.fi. Yeah. But for some things, I would say that it's probably easy to walk through. Yeah. Okay. Someone put in the notes here a pointer to the CSC weekly user support session. Um, ah, that's actually, yeah. This is really good. It's like our daily garage at Alto. So you can go yeah. there and ask questions and join some experts and yeah. figure out stuff live. Yeah, definitely something I should add also to the slide, something we uh, we already had for quite some time, but yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's true. Something, I mean, there, there was this that, okay, you, you can send email, and but I mean, this is this is an every Wednesday, you can just uh, online show in and yeah. hopefully build a low barrier place to ask questions. Yeah. And so is CSC a non-profit organization or is it a yes. company yes or yes we are, company? Uh, we are we are private company uh, but special company uh, non-profit company we are actually not allowed to make any any real profit and i say okay. don't but the ministry of education so okay yeah 
Yeah. And yes, we are, we are here to make the world a better place, not to make money. Yeah. And yes, our taxes go to supporting CSC, just like they go to supporting research because CSC is part of research. Yes. Anyway, exactly. um, yeah, thank you very much for coming. I guess you see can stay around in the um, notes and answer any further questions that appear there. Yeah. Um, I'll, I just put it in the chat with you see. So yeah, thanks a lot. Um, and see you next year or maybe before next year. Who yeah, knows? we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.